Hi everyone, Ren here. Fourth video in a row, I think. Um, as in over four days. Uh, I don't know what's happening, but in any case, welcome to my room. <laughs> um, I, had a, I have a friend who asked me recently, INTP friend, whether I could make a video on this distinctions between INTP and ENTP. And I realized then that this would be a cool video to make simply because I have not made a video exactly like this before. And, um, you know, I made videos comparing INFJ to ENFJ and various other INFJ and INFP or, you know, that kind of thing, but never INTP and ENTP. And I think that's, you know, I, I can probably talk a little bit about this. So let's, let's go, let's have a, let's uh, look into this. So if you've seen my previous video, you probably can predict that I'm not going to mostly focus on uh, what the functional differences are, because as long as you just focus on the description of the functional differences, you're describing nothing. Uh, you're describing an empty content. Um, so it's more interesting to sort of look at how this functional difference um, is manifested in concrete practical behavior. First obvious uh, difference, I think, to me um, is that ENTPs are <laughs> they're simply more enthusiastic. They come across more enthusiastic. They're more high energy and more upbeat in general. And that, that comes from like extroversion, you know. Now, it doesn't mean that INTPs cannot be upbeat or cannot be enthusiastic. You know, if you talk to them about certain topics, they can get enthusiastic. But there will definitely be a lot of discrimination between what makes them enthusiastic and what makes them not enthusiastic or it doesn't mean that they completely reject whatever they consider less exciting but it just means that it really doesn't lie within their perimeter of interest and you can feel this straight away because they won't pursue a conversation about this with you you know um linked to this i would say that you know entps come across as um more, I wouldn't say more curious, because ENTPs can appear on a superficial level to be more curious, but curiosity is, is, a, is a complicated concept, uh, as we will see in a second. I would say that they're less skeptical. So TI mix, you know, the, the higher TI is in your the stack, the more likely you are to be skeptical. And by skeptical, I mean that if you're given, if you're presented with a certain kind of information, um, how quickly are you going to embrace it as true or as convincing or as whatever? The more you have TI high in your stack, the less likely you are to let this kind of information be accepted, you know, easily. So uh, it could take a long time for an INTP to to go through that and. With an ENTP, that can be the case as well, but a lot less so because their dominant function is extroverted intuition. So ENTPs are much more, ENTPs are more curious in the range of things that they're likely to take an interest in because their discriminatory powers are less pronounced. But you could argue that INTPs are more curious, perhaps in the way that I would be curious myself, um, which is that once I get into something, I really want to get to the bottom of it, right? And again, not saying that ENTPs are not capable of getting to the bottom of things, but they are sort of pre pre programs, if you like, uh, in a sense, to be more easily distracted into exploring all these other things that um, that could be really cool. And so, if you imagine that you have like um, fifty different fields, and um, each of these fields comes with a certain level of mastery, right? Well, if you take an INTP and an ENTP, it's more likely that the ENTP will master more fields at a 50 to 60% level of mastery, whereas the INTP might master only five or six at 80 or 90%, right? So that's an interesting way of looking at it. I think the INFJs are a bit more similar to the INTPs in this respect uh, than the ENTPs because of TI and probably because of NI as well, which tends to 
focus on specific fields. The difference being that, well, actually, I cannot really tell you why. You know, it, it's it could it maybe is an unanswerable question what makes an INTP interested in a specific field because it will just depend on the person and personal variables that are too numerous and too complex to be captured by means of the MBTI uh, model. Um, but presumably that would be a field that they find interesting, profound and endlessly, you know, um, explorable. Uh, I think that an INFJ will have a slightly similar approach, but they will probably come to the conclusion that this is the field for them even prior to a deep TI ratiocination, uh, whereas I INTPs would have to go through that. With ENTPs, there's a much more unmediated sense of interest, right? So you could you could think about it this way. The curiosity of an ENTP is unmediated compared to the curiosity of an EN INTP. It's like as long as it, there are any can latch onto it, you know, it could be anything. So. It could range from anything like from, you know, something very intellectual to exploring the world, to understanding people, to um, figuring out what the better system of politics is for a particular place. And then like, I have an ENTP friend, uh, he actually appeared in one of my videos, his name is Julian. Like within one evening, you know, if I just let him go, we'll broach politics, philosophy, religion, uh, probably women a little bit as well. Um, you know, um, traveling, if I have not mentioned that already. And then all of a sudden, if I let him go, he'd be like, oh, by the way, and what about this theory of time, you know, and the Stephen Hawking thing, and how did you come across this new thing? And so it could be easily kind of dizzying, although it's also very exciting. Like with a 90p, that doesn't happen as in, in as pronounced a manner because they will have spent more time uh, thinking through these topics and already discriminating between what they want to pursue and what they don't really want to pursue. Perhaps they will already have perceived logical holes in some of the theories that are presented to them, which would make them not likely to approach them with you. Whereas an ENTP is capable of seeing these, these holes, but they will not focus on those holes first. Uh, so it's more likely that they will come to see them in conversation with you. Whereas an INTP uh, will often use conversation to better articulate what they have already figured out. Uh, that's how it's that, that's how I would describe it. Um, so I think conversationally, you know, ENTPs and INTPs are quite different. Um, with an INTP, what you're likely to encounter is a little bit of um, difficulty convincing them of things uh, because they're a bit slower to figure out whether they agree with it or not because there are so many variables that they want to go through. With an ENTP, the difficulty will more likely be in convincing them of not sticking to certain things because, you know, they're contradictory or, you know, they're not as uh, profound as they might think. Because they're, they're curious about a lot of things and <clears throat> it takes them a bit more energy to do something which they're very much able to do, which is to uh, start the process of discrimination. So... Um, I would say more upbeat, more enthusiastic, um, more curious in the sense of being less skeptical, but less curious in the sense of not eas as easily going deep into certain topics. And I think a third distinction, uh, which is linked to the first two again, is that the FE of an ENTP is actually quite different from the FE of an INTP. So often if you ask yourself like, wh what is um, what is this person's type, INTP or ENTP, just look at their FE. Sometimes it can be as simple as that. So um, an INTP's FE is very reactive and a little childlike. I made a video about this before. The FE of an INTP, if it is somewhat developed, you know, if it's, if it's not a repressed function, which is possible. Um, so if you're looking at a healthy ENTP, what you'll notice is that their FE is actually not, is not, it's nowhere near as reactive as the, ENT, the, uh, the FE of an INTP. So if you take the FE of an ENFJ as, uh, as, as the epitome of proactive um, and the FE of an INTP as the epitome of reactive, what you get with the NTP is the, a mix of reactive and proactive. So at times they will just FE react to things and sometimes like they will utilize FE in a way which might surprise you, might surprise you into almost thinking that perhaps they're 
you know, the NFGs. And in this regard, it's not a surprise that if you if you look at a number of different political figures or you know uh, public figures in general, some INTPs or uh, I mean, not no INTPs will ever be confused with the NF with the NFGs. Some ENTPs will be confused with the NFGs. Sometimes it's not clear. A paradigmatic example: Barack Obama. You know, um, if you if you look at the online conversations going on, there are people who think that he's absolutely an ENFJ, and other people who think he's absolutely an ENTP. Which one is that? Another example: Anthony Fantano, the music reviewer. If you're familiar with him, he tested the NFJ. It's clear that he's an EN. But if you look at his behavior online, it's, it seems a very ENTP. So again, not, I'm not clear on this. Even I'm not sure um, what he is. So that has to do with having an FE, which because it's not inferior, it's tertiary, sure. It's not the highest up in the, in the stack, but because it's tertiary, it is capable, especially over time, and especially with an openness to experience and openness to you know, social interactions with different kinds of people, it's actually susceptible to become really mature and, and pretty strong, you know. Um, so you can even come across the NTPs that are borderline bossy about what you should do, which is, you know, for your own sake and, you know, through a feeling perspective. So not bossy in the T sense, but that might seem surprising, but I have met the NTPs who are a bit like that. Now, most of the time they will not be like that because that's not what they favor, but they sometimes will be. It never happens with an NTP because that's, that is just completely foreign to them. Okay, so... Just to recap, so far what we have is the NTP is more a bit more, more beast, more enthusiastic, more, less skeptical, and their FE is qualitatively different from that of an INTP, right? And it's 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 also qualitatively qualitatively different in so far as it is capable of maturing more in a sense than than the INTP's FE, just in the same way that like an INFJ's SE is the difficult thing to see mature because we have so little control over it. It's, 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 it's borderline completely unconscious, right? So those are the th uh, three good ways of distinguishing between the two. Now I will add uh, a fourth, um, which again, it's a, it's a fourth uh, criterion, but it's, it, I'm not sure if it is completely independent from any of what I've just talked about, but like, you know, the openness to experience things. So. ENTPs are not just less skeptical than INTPs in terms of ideas and in terms of, you know, propositions. They're also less skeptical of how fun new experiences can be. So, um, you know, when I was a bit younger uh, and I was in college, I, uh, I had friends who are both ENTP and INTP and I can tell you that God, the NTPs were always up for like going to, <laughs> going to rave parties, taking all sorts of drugs. Um, INTPs, of course, INTPs can be open to these things, but again, a lot of them were like, "No, nah, sorry, not for me, not for me. I'm not interested in that." The NTP will sometimes be like, "Oh, you know, after all, like af after having like gone into all these different extremes, I can now say that maybe that's not for me." But they will often not be able to resist trying it out. So uh, maybe openness to slightly risky lifestyles, you could say, is much more likely to feature in an ENTP's life, at least some parts of their life, maybe not their whole life. I hope I didn't make it all sound like uh, INTPs are boring and ENTPs are great. <laughs> um, obviously both types have their own great strengths and uh, you know, they're just different. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. And if this has been of any use. All right, see ya.